Hi, in this video I want to explain what are the best tests to diagnose Hashimoto's thyroiditis. Hashimoto's is, of course, an autoimmune thyroid condition. It's the most common organ-specific autoimmune condition. And what that means in plain terms is a lot of people have Hashimoto's. Sadly, though, it generally takes 7 to 10 years before a woman will actually get formally diagnosed with Hashimoto's by an endocrinologist. Uh, I'm going to try to prevent that a little bit more by shortening the timeline. Uh, so it's an autoimmune problem, right? So what that means is your immune system is attacking the inside of your thyroid gland. And what it's attacking is something called thyroid peroxidase and or thyroglobulin. And those are substances that your thyroid gland uses to make thyroid hormones, T4, uh, and to a lesser degree, T3 inside the gland. So the big test you use for Hashimoto's is antibody testing. Now, an antibody, I always explain, is like a little post-it note uh, that your immune system makes to stick onto something. And so a little bit, a few post-it notes to thyroid peroxidase or a few post-it notes that would stick to thyroid globulin are normal, but a high level of those indicates your immune system is targeting your thyroid gland, and that is Hashimoto's. Now, it's not necessarily Hashimoto's thyroiditis yet, and here's where we kind of get into a name game, and I won't spend a lot of time on this, but uh, there's a, a spectrum of Hashimoto's, right? Now, over here on this end, we have what's called euthyroid Hashimoto's, right? I put that on the screen. What that means is you did the test and your antibody levels were high. But when they did the thyroid function tests, which I'm going to talk about in just a second, TSH, T4, T3, those were normal. Okay? That's called euthyroid Hashimoto's. Okay? Now, the other test that we do when we're trying to decide if someone has Hashimoto's is we look to see how's their thyroid gland actually doing because you can have a lot of antibodies and your thyroid gland still be making enough hormones or not be making enough hormones. The tests you do to find out if you're making enough hormones are thyroid stimulating hormone, uh, total T4 or free T4, total T3 or free T3. You don't really have to do any other tests to find out if you're making enough hormones. Now, if your TSH is elevated or a little bit high, that means your T4 and or T3 is a little bit low. Okay, There's an inverse relationship because of a negative feedback. So if your TSH is elevated, but the T4 and T3 numbers are actually okay, then that's called subclinical Hashimoto's. Right? Now subclinical just means, it's kind of a, a weird thing, but it just means the TSH is elevated. It means there's a problem brewing, may not get worse, or it may get worse. The fact is, though, about I'd say 80% of people that have subclinical uh, are going to end up eventually getting full-blown Hashimoto's if they don't do something about it. Uh, if your TSH is elevated and also at the same time the T4 or T3 are low, well that qualifies as hypothyroidism. And so the next stage in that little spectrum is overt Hashimoto's hypothyroidism, sometimes just called Hashimoto's, and sometimes people just call it hypothyroidism because the, the endocrinologist doesn't care that it's Hashimoto's uh, causing it. Now you may look at that and think about that and go, well, doesn't it matter that there's an autoimmune problem causing this? Yes, yes, it does matter, but you have to understand that with uh, regular medical endocrinology, they don't really care if it's Hashimoto's causing your hypothyroidism or if something else is causing it because the only tools they have to help you with that is replacement hormones like levothyroxine or Synthroid. And that's okay, right? That's okay, but that's only <laughs> about 10 to 15% of the solution because unfortunately, a huge number of people, women, that end up getting diagnosed with Hashimoto's and they take their thyroid medication and their numbers start to look normal on the blood work, they still feel bad. And that's because getting the medication to replace what you can't make is part of the solution, but it's not the whole thing because there's still the whole autoimmune side of things. And this is very important. So what happens if you do these tests, right, and you've diagnosed with Hashimoto's, you know, you had the antibodies were present, uh, the TSH was high and the T4, T3 were high or low, you were on the spectrum somewhere, you get prescribed medication because you're having trouble making hormones, and then six months later or nine months later, your lab numbers look good, but you still feel bad. What's going on? Well, unfortunately, uh, a lot of medical doctors will just say, well, you're depressed. You need an antidepressant. Are they going to refer you to somebody else because you have a problem that, that clearly isn't thyroid related? And I think that's a bit of a mistake, to be honest with you. What it boils down to is this. There's basically two kinds of thyroid problems, right? And I have another video on this you can look at if you want. 
there's two kinds of thyroid problems. There's quantity problems and then there's usage problems. Quantity problems can be found on blood work because your TSH will be elevated and your T4, T3 will be low, right? And that's cool that those usage problems can be found. They can tell you well, how, much, how many hormones are floating around, but they can't tell you, those blood tests can't tell you if you're using the hormones, not really. Using the hormones, okay, that is the job and the responsibility of thyroid hormone receptors, okay, and those are inside the nuclei of cells. And those receptors can get blocked and blunted and downregulated so much that you can have normal quantities but not be functioning like you've got normal quantities because those receptors are being blocked. It's like this. So like, let's say that this is T3, right? And this is a receptor. The receptor is waiting for the T3 to come by and dock and tell the DNA of the cell what to do. But if you've only got like one receptor or you have the receptors are blunted or downregulated, you don't get the benefit of the T3 that's floating around or you don't get the benefit of the Synthroid and the levothyroxine that you're taking. Now, the number one thing that will make those uh, receptors uh, malfunction is uh, inflammation or cytokines. So here's the thing, Hashimoto's creates a quantity problem and it creates a usage problem. So if you're taking thyroid hormones and you have Hashimoto's and you still feel bad, then you may have a usage problem or you may have a collateral inflammatory damage kind of problem because Hashimoto's is an inflammatory problem and inflammation and cytokines go everywhere. So they can affect, totally separate from thyroid hormones, they can, they can affect your ability to make energy, uh, they can affect your gut barrier, your blood brain barrier, uh, mitochondria, it goes on and on and on. So it's really important, yes, to get the right test to diagnose Hashimoto's, but it's also important to get the right information about the Hashimoto's because uh, just taking levothyroxine, just taking a Synthroid is probably important, but it's usually not everything most people need. There's so many other things that can be done, whether it's diet, supplementation, uh, finding out your immune system fingerprint. So please, I got a whole bunch of other videos you can and get more information on this, but make sure you're working with someone that understands these things I'm talking about today, because I don't want you to have to wait seven or 10 years to find out you've got Hashimoto's, and I don't want you to have to wait seven or 10 years after you've been diagnosed with Hashimoto's and are taking medication to finally get relief.